This is Outer Bike in Sun Valley, Idaho, and it's one of a series of four bike shows in 2019 that allow you to turn up, ride, and then test any number of amazing bikes over the course of three days. They've invited GCN here though, so that I can take you on a little tour of the place and uncover some very tasty new tech. Like the Cannondale Topstone Carbon Gravel Bike, which has got some really impressive innovation when it comes to comfort and compliance. So they've taken a cue, I think, from Trex Damani by adding a pivot to an otherwise rigid frame. And they've done that to effectively allow the frame to have a greater degree of controlled flex. On a normal bike, you get a degree of compliance from your seat post here as it effectively flexes, trying to pivot around your seat tube cluster here, moving backwards and downwards. But this design effectively amplifies that system. So by moving the chainstays down and adding the pivot, you can get more of the seat tube to flex. And you can see it's aided by effectively a leaf spring at this point here on the frame this point here and this point here. Now, Cannondale say that you actually get up to 30 millimeters of movement at this, and you can definitely see that when you try and push down on the saddle. They reckon it's akin to running a tire that's about nine millimeters fatter, and that gives you a lot of extra comfort. So if that's true, that is a pretty impressive claim. Now, there are a couple of other bits on here that are worth noting, I think. So in order to get the chainstays nice and short, or to leave the bike feeling really agile, there is a new bottom bracket standard in here. This is BB3083AI. Well, you mean you haven't heard of that one? No, me neither. What they've done is they've basically increased the length of your bottom bracket axle to space your Q factor out a little bit, but to give more room for wider tires in here and allow you to run that double chain set as well. It is slightly asymmetric, so that also means that the rear wheel doesn't need any dishing at all. So a stock rear wheel wouldn't necessarily fit in here, but the wheels that come with the bike potentially can be made up to be slightly stronger still. Really pleased to see this out in the wild. This is the Rota 1x13 group set. The reason being is that this is a direct descendant of Rota's original all hydraulic group set, the Uno, which I actually went to see as it was launched back in 2016. But things are slightly different with this one though. For a start, it's gone up to 13 speed at the back and one by up front. Now you'll use the same rear derailleur if you wanted to use it for mountain biking, gravel biking, or road biking. The things you change are the shifters, of course, to allow for drop bars or flat bars, and the cassette, which will go up from either 10 to 36 up to a 10 to 52, and there are four options. This almost dinner plate looking cassette is the 1052. Despite its fairly hefty looks, it's ridiculously light, and that is probably primarily due to Rota's legendary intricate CNC machining of 7,000 aluminium, which you can see most of the cogs are made out of that one piece, and then it's bolted on to some steel cogs at the, uh, the smaller end of the spectrum. Now, I'm actually gonna get to ride this, so we'll have a video with a little bit more insight onto all the details of the 1x13 group set coming up, so stay tuned for that. Now, Moots don't have a stand at Outer Bike, but they do have one of their new bikes, the Route YBB that they launched earlier this spring. Now, it's the second gravel bike with suspension in this video, but unlike the Cannondale, which has got a pivot, but no visible spring, this has a visible spring here, which is uh, an elastomer in there, but no pivots. Uh, instead, it relies on the material of the frame, which is titanium, of course, coming from Moots, to provide the flex in the right places. Now, this bike makes me think, once again, that with gravel bikes, we're just getting the absolute best bits of retro mountain bikes. Because that design there, that 20 mm suspension, is actually something that Moots have been using on one of their mountain bike soft tails, the YBB, for nearly 30 years. So it's proven, tried and tested technology here. The rest of the bike, you've got to say, as ever from Moots, is just a work of art, all handmade in Colorado. I'll let you just look at some welds for a bit. Now, 20 mil might not sound like much, but it's enough to take the edge off the bumps, and particularly when you combine it with the tire clearance for 45 millimeter wide tires. 
You have to look pretty hard to find a road bike here at Outer Bike, but we've done it. Oh yes, we have found a new Viathon R1. Now, Viathon is a completely new brand that was launched in spring of this year. They're going direct to consumer with their three models. So they've got their M1 cross-country mountain bike, their G1 gravel bike, which we'll be taking a close look at in a video coming very soon. But then there's this one, which is their R1 road bike. Now, there are three versions currently online, a Shimano Durace one, an Ultegra one, and a 105 one. But this, as you can see, is SRAM Red ETAP access. And although prices aren't confirmed yet, we hear that this could well be the most inexpensive way of getting a full ETAP access complete bike. So stay tuned for that. The frame is uh, the same, apart from a new colorway actually, which is this kind of cool matte black and metallic copper finish. 870 grams, although it's got some aerodynamic cues on there, it's not been designed as an out and out aero bike, more just an all round feel good road bike. And having a quick look at the geometry chart, there are some numbers on there that I really like the look of. So it's got a low bottom bracket, which gives it a real nice feeling through corners, you'd imagine. It's also short chain stays, which again, I really like. And the position up front, uh, it's kind of semi-aggressive, so you could get a slam position if you wanted, but it's not so low that you need an extra vertebra or some other kind of double jointed back to get comfortable on it. Looks good. There's part of me that doesn't really want to talk about bike lights, seeing as it's midsummer and it feels like a reminder of those dark winter days to come, but Light in Motion have got some new ones, so it'd be rude not to. And also, these can function as daytime running lights, so technically it's irrelevant what time of year it is. This is the Via Pro XL, and it is a smart light, which means it's got motion sensor detectors in there, so it will turn off when it senses that it's not going anywhere and turn on when it senses that you're moving. It's also got a light meter in there, so as you can see, at the minute it's flashing because it's sensing that it's daytime. Were you to ride at night, then it would be a constant beam and it would obviously change between the two automatically. It takes two hours to charge up and you get six hours of runtime in flashing mode like this, two hours on a full beam. You've also got these neat little side lights. That's something of a light in motion trademark. Uh, they've told me that 70% of bike accidents are from side on. So actually that little side light there could be pretty invaluable. Now, one neat touch that I really like is the way that you take it on and off your bike. So you can leave the mount on there permanently and then you've got this twist lock system that allows you to take it off. And you can see that's your USB charger there. You simply plug it back in and away you go. How cool is that? Yeah, right, 250 lumens for the front and then you've got the rear one with 150 lumens as well. Another road bike. Hard to miss this one, a beautiful custom painted Scott foil owned by Hunt. The reason it's here is because they've launched their new 48 Limitless wheel set. Now they're claiming that these are the fastest mid-depth wheel set in the world. And the reason they've managed to achieve that is because they've made them super wide, so 34.5 millimeters wide. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. There is more info on the GCN show today if you wanna check it out. But in essence, there's some really cool tech on here. Because of the extra width, they've managed to strip down a load of weight by actually replacing a bit of non-structural carbon fiber with a low density polymer instead. So they've shed 50 grams of weight per rim. So the whole package comes in a very respectable 1,582 grams. Another gravel bike. This is the new one from Open called the Open Wide. At first glance, it might look quite similar to their now pretty iconic Up, but as the name suggests, they have boosted the tire clearance on this one. It is wide, so you can fit monster 2.4 inch wide tires on these 650B wheels, and you can get some pretty wide 46 mil wide tires on 700C, so like your normal size road wheels. In order to do that, there's some pretty deft engineering work around the bottom bracket, because this still, as you can see, uses standard road cranks on there. So the first thing is that this is one by specific now, so they can move that chain stay out a little bit. But also, you'll see that the drop chain stay that was so familiar from that open up is now a dual drop chain stay, so it's no longer asymmetric. 
And as an aside from that, open say that that design, this kind of monobox system at the bottom bracket, has actually boosted the bottom bracket stiffness as well. Now, the differences don't end there. The geometry is a little bit different as well. So this one looks like it's a little bit taller and a little bit shorter, which would be in keeping with its kind of more playful nature, I guess, if you've got those bigger tires. Uh, and it's also got a very slightly uh, slacker head angle as well. We stopped by the Rudy Project booth, makers of helmets and also eyewear. The reason being, I was hoping to catch a glimpse of their new Defender graphene shades, but alas, the graphene-infused ones aren't here, but instead, ha ha, I've got the other Defenders. So the difference between these and the graphene ones is actually just in the frame material, but all the other cool bits are there. So they've got Rudy Project's adjustable temples here, so you can tailor the fit and also the nose piece as well. Perhaps most importantly, it's the styling. So these, I don't know whether you can tell, have been modelled on the aggressor shades that Rudy Project produced in the early 90s. Hopefully, I'm managing to do them justice. Uh, the other point is the lenses. So these are photochromic ones. They'll go from almost completely clear to heavily tinted, automatically changing the tint depending on the light conditions. These are Fidlock, and they have effectively reinvented the water bottle cage. Completely reinvented, because you can see there isn't a cage anymore. Instead, you've got these two powerful magnets here and on the water bottle, and they effectively help you to locate the bottle in place, but they actually don't retain the bottle. Instead, you've got this mechanical clip here. And what it means is that when it's in position, it's impossible to remove the bottle unless you twist it. So it's a little bit like a clipless pedal for your water bottle. What it means is that you cannot accidentally lose your bottle when riding over bumpy ground. So think about those water bottle problems in Paris Bay, for example, and also when you're gravel riding. The other main advantage to this is that in frames with really tight clearance for water bottles, instead of needing to push it into a cage, you simply twist it off. This is clothing from Wild Rye, who are a relatively new company with a focus on women's specific riding kit. Now, as you can see, it's more at the mountain bike end of the gravel riding spectrum, but hey, you can wear loose clothing when you're riding gravel, of course, as well. Now, their focus, they said, was on fit and also fabric, but then, as you can see, form as well. So they've got the loose fitting shorts there, they've got a liner short, as well, it goes with it, of course, women specific. And then I particularly like this jersey, which is kind of casual on the outside, but you still got those three rear pockets that's super useful at the back as well. Well, as you can see, we are out a outer bike. All that amazing tech is just a few miles down the valley there in Ketchum. But I wanted to bring you up here to give you a little taste of what is to come on GCN and GCN Tech over the coming days. Firstly, a gravel ride with the legend that is Rebecca Rush. And then also a look at the super tricked out bike that I got to ride with Rotor's 1x13 group set. So that'll be detailed and demoed. And then another video, this time a close look at the new Viathan G1 gravel bike. Now, if you want a bit more info about those hump wheels, then do make sure you check out the GCN show this week with Dan and Chris. Otherwise, give this vid a big thumbs up and let us know what you think about the tech.